Ivy's bare knock back and up being man, I think Ivy's up B is kinda manageable now. It was much worse before with the larger hitboxes. Oh yeah. Or it was much freer before with the larger hitboxes. I feel like I can get away from it with DI now. You have any tips for a Roy user, Cephalon? <laughs> More down I to really it. Have to. That's such a hard question for people to answer. Yeah, yeah you, when you ask questions like, like that, that Roll Tar, you should ask more specific questions because vague questions are very, very hard to answer, and you could go on for I hours. Because in general, like I could tell you like how to get better for Roy, just the same way you get with any character. You practice a lot. All right, I'll. If you ask a vague question, you're probably going to get a vague answer. Or you might get a cheesy answer <laughs> that's sort of designed to just like minimally answer the question. For example, you could say no, that answers the question. Uh, you, could also just give, <laughs> you, you could also just give two random pieces of a good advice. Like you could say, um, like, I don't know, down tilt's good, side B's pretty good, use those moves. That is... <laughs> Two tips for a Roy user. Yeah. So. But you don't actually like. Also. Yeah. You could also say yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's great. I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Too fun. Do you guys think if Shrooms or Hacks started to participate in PM? Do you think it would give the good players a real challenge, like what makes you real about? I think there's plenty of challenge in PM tournaments, and every scene kind of has their own like top players, uh, and it's really interesting watching those interactions when the scenes travel. Uh, especially like at Apex, it was really awesome watching all the good players play against each other, and the bracket was just like crazy full of talent and even good players that people didn't really recognize. So I definitely think all that competition is there, and I don't think someone like Hex or Shroom picking up the game would make that much of a significant impact aside from their local scenes. Yeah. I mean, Hex has entered PN tournaments in the past and he just kind of uses Falcon or yeah. Fox and... Now, if, it up a bit. if Hex or Shroom picked up the game and played new Seriously? characters and like showed off stuff that other people didn't think was possible and like advanced metagames, then yeah, that would be awesome. But any anyone yeah. anyone doing that would be awesome. Like yeah, Armada with Pit, like is so Armada's Pit's fucking awesome. <laughs> you know? Rune probably would do something like that. Like back yeah. in the day, he used Sonic a little bit. He didn't really know how to do anything with Sonic, but he was still trying a different character. Mm -hmm. I could see Shun doing that. But I've only met him once. Yeah, cause like there there's some players that like kind of rose to power after. Brawl came out in the melee scene, like Hacks and uh, Shroomed and Pew Pew and such, and they're generally more like open to PM than like the old guard, I guess. Hugs generally likes speaking, PM. Anyway. Oh, that was cool. Yeah. Who? Hugs? Oh, I, yeah. I, I, did, I did say generally speaking. Well, yeah. Cool. Ken, Ken also likes it. I don't know if he's ever entered a tournament for it, though. I don't know. I kind of feel the opposite. I kind of feel the new people yeah. don't like it as much as the older people. Ken said on his stream that he enjoys PM more than Melee nowadays. And it makes sense for someone who's played that long. It's new new content. It's like a sequel, right? Like, that's why I enjoy PM more. Does he still use Troy? Stuff. Um, does Ken use Troy? I've seen his yeah. Troy here and there. It looks solid, yeah. I've seen him he, still, plays Mark, so. he still generally uses just the melee characters and Roy, I guess. I saw him trying to play Lucario a couple times, but he had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> I th thought I saw Lucky use Lucario. Okay, I found the moment I was talking about with King Mark. Oh, sick. Yeah. Alright. Well, controls actually going back and forth to three both players. Oh, okay. That's what that dealt with. Uh, Ah oh, shit, I'm on uh... <laughs> no. It happened so fast. It's crazy yeah. that you remember that exact scenario. That's, I just remember, like, my mind. He's probably was, reviewed oh, the video a bunch of times. Oh my god, that's have, crazy. Even, even before I reviewed the video, I knew, like, this is just ridiculous. 
Yeah. I, I was thinking in my mind, Doc, there is no answer These are very for, smart. for me poking with forward tilt for multiple spacing. And he just, he was like, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing. The one thing he could do. Right? <laughs> Bullshit. It's cheating. Oh, oh yeah. I do me and Binion determined that Armada is literally a cheater, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He beats top foxes with because ten. the fox pit matchup is like eight two in fox's favor, right? <laughs> Part of why. So it, the only explanation that Armada is a cheat. That's like a non-trivial part of why Shard's naming DDD instead of Pit in 2011. Because I could beat foxes with DDD, but with Pit it just felt like such a chore. Hmm. Like some of the matchups seem like really doable for Pit, like uh, Sheik Marth. Falcon, yeah. Peach, like they—they all seem like very doable. Like I some like of them probably in Pit's favor, and uh, and then you like play a space and you're like, Jesus Christ, what the, what do I do? Falco is more manageable, but yeah, it's, I don't mind Falco that like, much. Like we've had this uh, discussion before, but it's like you kind of have to like get a read on their laser pattern to do anything like at all, other than just trade nothing, like arrow to laser, so. Dinky Swinky, a RAR is a term called Reverse Aerial Rush that comes from Brawl, and it is reversing your momentum out of a run into a jump. So you would be... I what? Found I found a video tutorial on that. Oh, okay. Yes. Check out that video tutorial that Seth on posted. Uh, that will explain it. But basically, you're just running, and then you jump backwards. It's essentially the gist of it. And, uh... You do that by Basically, going like into you your turnaround animation. Yeah. Uh, your skid animation, rather. Once you see your skid animation, you can jump and you'll be facing backwards. That's... In Melee, if you like try to do a turnaround during a run and jump, you'll end up facing the same direction you ran in. In um, Brawl, you actually turn around and like if you jump, you'll be facing the opposite direction. Which is pretty handy. And in PM, it actually has more uses than Brawl because one of the mechanics that Brawl changed was like the tendency to keep your momentum out of a run. You actually don't. You just start at maximum air velocity. And you. So a running jump is not faster than a standing jump for all intents and purposes. Uh, but in PM, like you can like do a RAR and like contain a lot of backwards momentum and like do a, a aerial, which is pretty neat. I got, I have like 15 emails. And they're all people subscribing. <laughs> following. Oh, uh, following? Yeah. Hey. This is the best idea ever, Strongman. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. When you get the t Twitch and YouTube bucks, you better be. <laughs> <laughs> when I make it $20,000 a month, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Okay, see you in 20XX. <laughs> Dude, I was looking at the how much streamers make and the really popular ones. Um, the ones that get like anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 viewers, standard, uh, make at the very least like $23,000 a month. $23,000 yeah, a nice. month. Holy fuck. And that's That's only counting money they get from Twitch ads. That's not counting subscriptions. Or subs and stuff. Or donations. YouTube money. Or YouTube money. That's only Twitch. Absolutely absurd. But there are very, very few people who have that many viewers, so. I mean, is that if they stream every day or what? It was an average. Taken from a couple of streamers who got okay. there. And yeah, I think they streamed at least like five days a week. Okay. Because a lot of streamers only stream like once or twice a week at most. Like uh, VG Bootcamp. Yeah. And you see, others. VG Bootcamp would make more money from so... YouTube stuff than they would from Twitch stuff. Uh, assuming. They do. Assu actually. Assuming Nintendo uh, doesn't the subs mon definitely monetize help, all of Oh, yeah, the subs for sure. And the subs, uh, the... Nintendo doesn't, 
excellent. Remember, they were going after Let's Plays and stuff, and part of that was. Uh, oh, I know, but I think they backed off uh, of that. Smash videos, but. Uh, so I'm not sure. Yeah, they did. They definitely did. So like, VG Boot Camp and Clash, they get they get money from mm -hmm. stuff. As far as I know, the only like content claim is if they have like custom music from PM. Yeah. Which was a problem, like with Skyloft, because like that yeah. that was the song that was released in like 2008, mm -hmm. or 2009, uh, with the uh, Skyward Sword. So it was actually part of YouTube's like content matching so uh, algorithm, mm -hmm. unlike the old songs that were in Brawl. Mm -hmm. So like they'd get like a claim and they wouldn't even try to monetize it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Special on this character is so cool. <laughs> Roy, I'm guessing? Yes, the one he's known for. Yep, Roy so is pretty fun. Dude, I've done some absolutely absurd police sitcoms combos with Roy, and they're never recorded, and I'm always so sad. And I feel like this must happen so often to Roy players, because he's just, well, he has such I'm awesome ready. combos. In what? Right, I got, I got PS randomly. So I got one on uh, AJ, if you remember him. Mm -hmm. Against the snake the other day. We were playing on... AJ, is that light? Yeah, light. Oh yeah, I remember him. Yeah. So, I was playing against him on Skyloft. And we are on the right side. He was a bit towards the middle. And I think I down tilted him. And he popped up. And it landed on the, the, the platform on the top right. I jumped off the wave landed on. Tech chased him with a down tilt again. Mm. Did a full hop forward air towards the left. Dropped with another forward air. Landed on the little tiny platform there. Ran off the platform. Did an aerial side B. Tapped him with that. And at this point he was like a, a bit above and behind me. Double jumped up aired. Landed on the platform again. And then forward smashed him. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like that is the sexy. It's like... Part. Hard to follow in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, uh, just the other day I did, uh, the last Smash Fest I streamed, I did a, on a Marth, I did, like, four down airs carrying him to the top platform of Battlefield into an up smash and up smash. <laughs> it was like, downer, 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 up smash. <laughs> and it was just like, it was like a ladder carrying him up Battlefield. Oh, it was so cool. I was like, oh, boy players must do this all the time. <laughs> this character is so fun. I don't always get the kill, but I usually do a lot of damage. Yeah. Yep, yep. So did you guys see the new Turbo Tuesday? <laughs> so good. Yes. Uh, I actually was at work all day, and uh, people were texting me about it. And they're like, oh, it's so good. And I was like, yeah. Uh... Sure, I hadn't because I, I hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> like, I feel like I should know about this, but I only had seen the intro at that point. So I was like, it must be good if people are texting me about it. Oh, I really don't like the Apex stage list. Yeah. If if uh, if as I was asking based on the Apex stage list, what do you think? What do you guys think should be legal slash not legal? Uh, well, mostly I don't think there's any reason to have people stadiums in the same stage list. Yeah. The fact that you have to spend two bands to ban a single stage is very strange. That in Stadium One promotes a lot of camping and promotes a lot of silliness. Like, if Ivysaur is ever playing on Stadium One and it ever goes into a transformation where she can hide on the left side, she'll just hide on the left side and you have to chase her or she heals and charges a solar beam. Which isn't really a healthy interaction. Yeah, you pretty much have to threaten her with being there, and it's stupid. I remember Jordan tried that once against me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In 2.5. Master plan. You had this big old master plan. Dude, I did, and it was so close to working because I beat you with Fox game one. I was like, okay, he didn't expect the fox. Yeah, it takes me a while to adjust the fox. And then I switched to Ivysaur when you counterpicked FD, I which I knew you would. And I was so close to meeting you. There's a master plan, and it, you fell into my trap perfectly. And then it was like last stock. It worked. And you DK, and you DK'd me. <laughs>
then I tried the, the then I tried the PS1 jank and that didn't work. Yeah. Uh, I actually yeah. like PS1 a lot, um, but I have a much different view on stages than the majority of people. So you probably don't want to hear <laughs> what I have to say. I have a very old school mentality when it comes to stages. I like what SoCal does a lot nowadays. What's that? Oh, well, we have a fairly... Well, first of all, in terms of starter stages, we just use the five stages in the middle of the bottom row. And just do this pretty much a melee-style striking, where one person takes off one stage, another takes off two, then the first kid takes off one, and you play on whatever's left. And let's see. And for what stages are legal, we just try to emphasize not having stages that overlap too much. Like, Adam already mentioned how if you have Stadium 2 and Stadium 1 on at the same time, then, um, well, if somebody wants to take off that sort of archetype of stage, then you need to use two bands to do it as opposed to just one, which to some people is questionable. So we try to prevent things like that from happening. So, for example, we don't have Yoshi's story on, but if you want a stage that has really close blast zones, you could go to, say, WarioWare. We have that on. And we took Yoshi's off because we already have a bunch of other three-platform stages to choose from. Or, I mean, you know, the usual pyramid layout. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, overall, we do have quite a few stages not on, but there's still I still feel like there's a good amount of variety. Like, I, I can't just list off the top of my head which stages are banned. I know the geometry on the stage select screen. It's kind of like this funky M <laughs> shape of banned stages. But Yeah. yeah. I have a... Uh... Uh, tournaments I've hosted, I've had like uh, Frigate Legal and DK64 because I just like to test a bunch of stages. And I took Frigate off because it was pretty dumb. <laughs> I uh, I kind of picked a Falcon player there. <laughs> oh, you're a <laughs> <laughs> Well, he counted me to, to Donkey Kong Jungle 64 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Cargo Jungle 64. Donkey Kong. Just like taking him to like, just like taking him to World One One of Donkey Kong. <laughs> just like bust out the door. We went to Dai Dai Ducks. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, dude, Links of B plus plus frigate plus Falcons up <laughs> equals dead Falcon. <laughs> Uh, Falcon's recovery was buffed, Hybris, so you're welcome. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we have successfully <laughs> completed someone's request. Um, but I do love Frigate, it it's a really fun stage, but uh, it didn't work out in tournament. But I actually didn't mind uh, DK64. And I played like two it's or three, actually, like, not two or three tournament. I played two or three tournament sets on it against the Falcon. And they all turned out just like nothing dumb happened. There's no barrel, so there's none of that dumb stuff. And I like the interesting recovery dynamic that the stage has with like being able to go under it and stuff. So it's it's I think that's really cool about the stage. And I never really thought the circle camping thing was a problem at all. Well, the thing is, like, the platforms are, like, legitimately lower than melees. Uh -huh. So, like, whatever argument there is for um, circle camping and melee, it's not as, like, relevant in PM because, like, the platforms legitimately aren't, aren't the same height. Yeah. I mean, I mean and, like, that's true. So I that even furthers my is case of it. And, uh, so I actually like that stage. And I, I might have that on in more, more tournaments in the future. Uh... But if like Probably my scene, if my scene really hates a stage, like I'll take it off because like I don't want to be an asshole. <laughs> uh, I'm not a complete like tyrant, but I do like like trying things out. And I wish, I wish more people in the community, not just with stages, but with anything that they feel, instead of just going with the flow, would try out things randomly, just for the sake of trying it out. Maybe not in like big tournaments, but at like locals, or with friends. So I think there's a lot to be learned from stuff that you don't encounter often. 
Um, but I also like PS1 because it Samus double jump missile cancel well, better than PS2. <laughs> It's better. It's way better than PS2. I can't. I hate it on PS2. What if? What if there? What if you could ban Pokemon Stadium and it would just ban both? What if, that would be great. Would that it be, be a problem? Be I mean, that could be a rule. Um, we'll say it'd be well, confusing. That, that, that but... depends if the if you're using a rule set that says you can counterpick to the same stage that you banned. Because I like Stadium Two, but I do not like Stadium One. Okay. Well. Yeah. I, I to be fair. That. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, like I, I will a never. Of, a lot of ever ban lists. Counterpick Stadium One, but I will very seriously. What about you? Yeah. What about you? Can choose to ban both or one. Kind of. I mean, it's not that. I, I feel like that complicates the counterpicking. Come on. Well, it does. This is this is for discussion purposes. Yeah. Just uh, save a stage. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just well, saying. Like the precedent this sure. set is one that I as it's you, I would run such a rule. Like the right, the precedent for like, could you do that for other stages and stuff like maybe Yoshi's and Warrior Wear or like Fountain of Dreams and Warrior yeah, Wear just like, which stuff like that. Of stages yeah, are you gonna tie together. And, and then it goes into the whole group meetings. I understand like that logic already popped into my head, and I was waiting for someone to bring that up. But just band. just just in the fact that they share the name. And they are extremely similar. And they are extremely similar in every way. It's the only justification I would have for that. I just feel, oh, it sucks. There's like no stage Samus can do that on now in PM that's like effective. Because there's no long stages that she has the low platforms on. Like, there's none. PS, PS1 was the only I mean, stage. I, I think I think with the improvements to her kit, I don't think she necessarily needs it. I don't understand it either, but it was one of the most fun things about playing Samus. And it was one of the things I enjoyed most about playing Samus. And the fact that, I don't know, it just like, playing her just feels worse on PS2 than it does playing on PS1. Oh, what it if we change the platform heights to match? I would love P. I would. I think that's an amazing idea. <laughs> then I'd be all for banning PS1 because the platform might add some more. Uh, heights match, and then there's actually no reason to play PS1. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Alright, let's go. Force design. <laughs> Jeremy, could you, uh, explain? Oh, it's, the, pic good. it's the picture that Nail EXE posted um, in the chat. Oh, let it's me click this. It and you just kind of just out of nowhere. <laughs> Armada's <laughs> ghost. About Armada's ghost. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And it's like the rest of the. I mean, I'm on this really awful internet right now. Yeah, and it's just amusing to me because the rest of the post is just like totally normal. And just there's this one line. <laughs> that just for some reason mentions Armada's ghost. Oh, well, the the picture that they're using for the the scissors for yeah. Hungerbox kind of looks like he has. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just ghost is in the background of Hungerbox. Oh, I'm aware of that. Okay. But... All right, it's loading. It's taking forever to load. Wait, uh, you're still trying to look at the picture. <laughs> strong red, please. Yes, yeah, like I'm, it's 2014, man. Uh, explain this. I, I can't. I'm, I hate you. So I can't <laughs> do Skype with my home internet. So I'm using my phone internet to be on your shitty sh stream. And hey, because hey, of that, hey, I no need, my data no need to keep throw, throw insults around me. <laughs> my stream happens to be so amazing. So I've hit my data limit for the month. So, well, it's amazing because we're all here. It's great. Oh, yeah. And, uh,. <laughs> So, like, I've hit my day limit, so, like, this is taking literally seven years to load, so. The typing roof almost came down again. Almost. Almost. That was kind of the perfect typing moment where we <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got, got the, the full... It's like it's his fingers different. became more aware uh, of the, the looming let's presence. Let's talk about Smash 4, guys. Smash 4. Let's actually answer this, like, verbally. Oh yeah, what's the consensus on Super Smash Brothers 4? Does it look whack or are you guys going to buy it? Personally, uh, I'm definitely going to buy it for the Wii U and the 3DS. And I'm excited to play it. I love Smash. I have played Smash 64, Melee, Brawl, and PM. 
And I'll play a Smash game until I get bored of it, and then I'll just go on to whichever one I'm not bored of. <laughs> um, I, will, I will definitely not be dropping like Project Dimmer Melee to play it, though. I'll just play all of them. And I don't know if I'll play it seriously. The thing I'm worried about with Smash 4 more than anything, more than how good it'll be or anything, is how tournaments will work, considering the Wii U does not have a wired controller. There's zero wired controllers. There are no third-party wired controllers. There's none. The only wired controller it has is the Wii U Pro controller, which is wired by USB, and the only thing it does is charge it. The actual input is sent from a wireless signal, which means a big tournament uh, would have lots of wireless interference. And uh, things like MLG, uh, uh, companies like MLG have actually like banned remote usage when they hold Smash because of wireless interference with all the wireless stuff going around. And uh, I know, like, Razer has experienced wireless interference with his Wiimote with only a few people using Wiimotes at large tournaments, maybe like 10 people uh, or whatever. Uh, so the fact that you could have possibly, like, 20 to 30 Wii U's all with wireless controllers with, like, doubles going on uh, just screams, like, horrible problems for the tournament scene to me. T.O.A. Nightmare. T.O. Like, everything Nightmare. How are you going to hold the tournament? What I hope is that online is awesome, and I'm going to enjoy the game with my friends, but I'm really skeptical about how the tournament scene will play out, considering uh, what I previously mentioned. Uh, Fireburst says that wireless interference won't be a problem if that's what you're worried about. But I assume it's because the technology for the Wii U uses, like, Bluetooth or something, which doesn't have any issues with wireless interference, unlike the Wiimotes. That would be cool. Uh, if that's not a problem, then great. I'd still like a wired controller, but <laughs> if it's not a problem, then great. I would also prefer it. Uh, I'm going to use the GameCube controller, most likely, for Smash 4 with my Mini Flash adapter. The Mini Flash thing. Which I tested, and it does not lag at all. Like, zero frames of lag. It's awesome. Very awesome. Uh, yeah, Bluetooth. Hmm. So Bluetooth doesn't get interference? Like, there's no deal with 60 Bluetooth consoles being on at the same time aren't going to cause interference with each other? I don't know the... I'm pretty up to date I on mean, my tech stuff, but not not as much with the networking and wireless so stuff. Like the Wii U came out in, like, 2012, question mark? Very late of it. So, I mean, that's like, uh, I don't know, six years worth of technology improvement so i wouldn't be surprised if the wireless technology was just suddenly available to it's, not have issues it's not as much as like i mean the technology can improve but as long as you're still using the same frequencies and the same waves like interference will be caused regardless of the device being used like i wouldn't i don't even know if they use frequencies like whatsoever yeah i mean i don't know either i'm, yeah, just, saying, I'm just saying in general i don't know if bluetooth causes interference i was asking uh fiberist Mm -hmm. There's too many layers of frequency mean? to get confused with something. Like thousands? Yeah, like, what is that layer? Because think about a national. Like, yeah, that'd be awesome if it works for whatever, but, like, imagine running the first Smash 4 national and then just fucking nothing works. Like, Smash 4 and MLG, like, 2016, and there's, like, literally 2,000 people entering. Mayflash uh, has two different adapters. One is the USB hub with GameCube ports for the controller, and they also have a converter, which you plug into a Wiimote, uh, and then play the game through the Wiimote with your GameCube controller, and it acts as a classic controller, letting you use the GameCube controller on the Wiimote, which is what I use, and I've tested it, and I'm a very technical Melee Fox player, and I can tell you it doesn't lag at all. Hey, look! It looks like someone's got some uh, stuff. Um, here's the uh, exact anyway, well, well, we're talking about that. How about we get opinions from uh, Cethlon and or Fly? Yes. On like the general concept of Smash Four. Before we get bogged down in like logistics. I think Smash Four could potentially be very interesting. I think they're trying a lot of new stuff with the characters, like with villagers craziness and like mm -hmm. the 
like I'm just trying to imagine how Rosalina will play in a competitive setting. <laughs> really idea. Yeah, it is. Um, I think it's still going to lack some of the quote unquote depth that some of the people like about Project M and Melee, since it, as far as I've seen, does not have L canceling, it does not have the, all the movement intricacies of wave dashing. And I'm also worried about wireless stuff. But I think it'll probably be fun to screw around with the friends at the very least, but I am uh, I'm worried about the tournament scene. Well, in my case, is a little... I'm not sure how to describe a lot of things regarding my feelings towards it. Some of the... I haven't been paying too much attention to it, because honestly, I just haven't felt much incentive to really be interested in it whenever I look at it and think about how might playing this add to the quality of my life. At least at this point in my life, I don't see too much reason to really care about it that much. I will say that some of the things I've seen do look cool to me. I like that they have a puppet character. If I were to play Smash 4 at all, and I'm sure through some circumstances, I'll probably end up playing it at one point or another, probably not in a terribly serious context. But my, I don't know, I might, like, screw around and see what I can do with Rosalina just because I like that sort of character. But, yeah, and it's a lot of this just isn't even really because of Smash 4 specific details. I'm just not sure of picking up yet another game to invest in seriously on a competitive level is something I want to do at this point in my life, especially with some other stuff going on. Like, I've got to go back to grad school and get a... PhD somewhere. That's something I still need to think about. So yeah, and doing that together with playing two Smash games competitively and picking up a third and probably very different one doesn't sound terribly appealing to me. Hmm. So yeah, I, I guess I can say I'm just not that interested in it, but that's also just because of other pre-existing circumstances more so than the game itself. Fair point. Uh... Looking at this Reddit thread, I could still see the problem with the national tournaments because it, it's saying uh, once you get past 79 different controllers, uh, it'll start to channel hop. The frequencies will start to channel hop. Uh, and at nationals, I would imagine there are hundreds of controllers. So we'll see. It sounds like it might work fine for most tournaments, but nationals might be a little tricky. But maybe that could be solved by just renting out two rooms or something uh, and separating the setups. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Strongman? Uh, for me, I'm skeptical, like, as both for a standpoint and... Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Hello? Yep. Oh, bad. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Um... I'm kind of skeptical as a, from like a team standpoint and as a player standpoint. I'm not that interested in from a player standpoint because anything I could want out of a Smash game, other than like specific characters like Little Mac or Mega Man, I'm going to get from Project M anyway. Uh, because it has the characters that I like, like conceptually and like competitively, like their play style. But, um,. I don't know. I think it'd be really good for the scene because you'll get a lot of good players, new players, and you can get them interested in the project and melee, and I guess brawl as well. Since if that survives, I don't think it will. Um, but I'm not that interested in it, and, and yeah, it's mostly because of PM. If I were still playing melee, like by itself, I'd probably be at least moderately interested, but not so much with PM. Yeah. Because PM has revision, so it, it can actually get better, unlike Melee. So, I don't know. I'd love to see Melee HD released on the Wii U. That'd be awesome. That way they could start playing with uh, on Melee HD TVs. <laughs> 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 Dude, uh, oh god, the end of days is coming in. 
<laughs> Fly shall rain down his keyboard. Donald Wrath. Uh, and all will be silenced. Except for the thunderous spores of its keys. I'm gonna write an epic poem about flies typing. <laughs> yeah, about Naruto. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was gonna say something, but I forgot with the I'm, rain of keys. I'm, I'm done typing about that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I played one Naruto game as well, and I learned some infinite, and then I did that to someone, and then I never played it again. I have no idea which one. It was also <laughs> for GameCube, though. Wow. The Ice Climbers player learning on infinite? Huh. <laughs> yes, the Irish shoot. I do think it would be possible. Uh, oh, sorry. You're asking about the possible LCD TVs. Uh, those uh, those LCD TVs, I've seen the test on them, and they look very legit. And I would personally not mind playing on one at all. And I would actually probably prefer playing on one if it was an HD. Uh, there's less than one frame of lag, which is absolutely not noticeable by anyone. I don't see how anyone could could notice a, a half of a frame of lag or a fourth of a frame of lag. Well, that that sort of thing can still still push you off the boundary of when something would normally work. There was this really great breakdown on TV lag, and I thought I'd read it on the front page of Smashboard, but I haven't been able to find it again. I have like the um, past week. You, are you talking about Fizzy's write-up on Melee It On Me? Um, maybe? I'll, I'll find it, just a second. I didn't, I, I didn't see it on like the Melee It On Me site. I'll post it in the Twitch chat. Okay. That might be what you're thinking of. It's kind of a long article, but it's an interesting breakdown on... Yes, this is the one I've read. Okay. So yeah, so the interesting thing about this is that even if you have less than a frame of lag, you can still have that amount of lag push your movement from a frame that it would normally happen to the next frame. So even like even if your like your range of motion is, but isn't that that's only reactionary based? Though the inputs are happening at the same time regardless of the the lag. It's not input lag. It's it's display lag, which would mean no matter no matter what you're doing, no matter how much the lag on the TV when you're doing the input is when it's happening. It's just the display from from the console yeah. sending it to the TV. Uh, there's no reaction in the history of mankind that is like faster than one frame. Uh, anything, anything yeah, lag based, just... from my understanding, would only affect reactionary stuff. It doesn't actually. It, it would have absolutely no effect on inputs because your inputs aren't affected regardless of the TV lag. If you closed your eyes uh, and did like an ice climber chain grab on a lag TV, it'd be oh, no yeah, different than looking. Looking at yeah, it because the inputs that's are not what I'm uh, trying to say. I don't. No, 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 I don't okay, really follow no. you. Then that's what I'm saying. No, um. It, well, it does affect your reaction time, and even even if, like, say to punish a a Marth forward smash, you have to react with your wave dash out of shield. I'm just gonna make up random numbers. I don't know the exact one. Mm -hmm. You have to make up. You you say you have like a a ten frame window. To actually punish the to do your jump out of shield in time, the wave dash, etc., punish whatever you're punishing with. And normally, you do your input on the ninth frame, like for you know just barely before the game would register the tenth frame input. So you do the input. It's before frame ten. So on frame ten, you do your jump with a even a small amount of lag. There is the potential of it pushing your reaction to that past, like the 9.9999 frame into the 10th frame, which means that your input would happen 
on frame 11 instead of frame 10, despite the fact that the actual input lag is much less than in a full frame. See, but I don't, I don't think that would be the case in that situation, because you would be reacting to... Uh, are you saying, like, out of shield? Because yeah. you, you only have to react... Like, once you shield, the display lag shouldn't matter or whatever. Sure, it should. How so? Because you're reacting to Like, assuming that it's not something you have in complete prediction and not something that you have, you know, your hands trained to do so that, you know, you perfectly punish it so that, you know, it doesn't matter what the, the window is. You are taking in input and then reacting as fast as you can. And the fact that the display lags even by a small amount it could change... I think I'm now getting what you're trying to say. Yeah, sure. you see what I mean? Uh, it shouldn't... It sh what should matter is your reaction time of shielding, not your reaction time of doing the action after shielding, you know what I mean? Like, if it could affect, like, say you normally shield one... Like, what you're saying is, like, say you normally would shield the... the, the no, I'm gonna try calling it strong bow back. You you would normally try to shield it frame nine or whatever, and because of the the display lag, you actually shield it frame ten because that thing pushed it over to frame ten. Like that sort of makes sense to me. But after you've already shielded it, it shouldn't matter, you know, because mm, I would think it would because you don't you not re you don't have to react to anything after you shield it. Well, yeah, you are. You're reacting to the shield stun and then punishing as fast as humanly possible. If you don't do it fast enough, then, you know, you don't punish in time. Mark its way. Power shielding wouldn't be that... Well, with any... We're talking under a frame of lag, Cactuars. Like, we're talking like point one or point... Or like, one-fourth of a frame of lag or something. I don't remember the exact number. I have to look it up again. Uh, but it was. Did you actually do an analysis of power shielding on the uh, the melee on me? Uh huh. You wanna look at that? I it's kind of will long, look at long winded, that. so it's not really something you can scan. Yeah, through. that's what I was. I mean, I will definitely read that after because I'm interested in this stuff. Like, from my understanding, like what you're saying could affect. I still don't really see how it could affect react because you don't really react to shield stun. You just do the input. You react like shielding. <laughs> well, you—that's that's how you do the input. Is you you react to the thing the stimulus that is. Oh, happening. I know it's insane, but if you successfully get the shield up, you're not going to be any further behind. Because if you get the shield yeah, up, the move hits you. Yes, you would because you you physically take it. Okay, the move has hit me. Okay, now I'm out of shield stun. Now I can act. I mean, that's what the entire game is based around. You can't do anything unless you have stimulus of knowing what is happening. Okay, I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I mean, I mean, you can do things without reacting to them. Like, you don't need to react to anything once you shield something. Like, if I want to jump out of shield after after doing it, I can just hit jump a bunch. And I will Hello? jump. Hello? Yo. Hello. Hey, what's up? I, I, I'm just trying to understand, because like, I legitimately don't understand. I understand like the scenario I gave, where you're saying you could push it over into another frame into reactionary things. I just don't understand how if you've already reacted to an attack and have successfully shielded it, how reaction plays in after that. When you already know Because you're still reacting, like it's not that good well, it's not that the game stopped and you know you're not you're not playing a trend based game where Yeah, but you know like if you successfully attack. shield the force match, like you know what you're gonna do to punish it. Like you can wave dash well, out of shield grab or jump out of shield you, forward air. So yeah, you just do, you that do that as soon as you shield. So but it's not just as soon as you shield. All right, let's play. <laughs> when you see the attack hit your shield is what you're going to be reacting to. Uh -huh. so let's say I shield a Marth forward smash. I say, okay, I don't know, and the number of frames after this forward smash hits my shield, I want to jump out. 
a bit. Mm -hmm. But if there's some slight visual lag, um, when that attack hits your shield, it's going to be you're actually going to be trying to input the jump or something along those lines. It'd be more relevant with weaker attacks that have fewer frames of hit lag and field stun. Yeah. Like reacting to a jab or something. Yeah, like a, or forward tilt. a low lag tilt or something like that. That has a very small window of punish, even with the AS. Yeah. That makes more sense to me. I just, I just wasn't visualizing like how you could possibly miss a punish on like a Martha smash on your shield with less than a frame of lag. Like, well, pro probably know. just because of how much time you have to react to it, you know? The, the point that I was getting at is that it could push your reaction back a frame further, possibly, which in a normal situation would result hmm. in punish. Up to a frame, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I wonder well, how people hmm. test stuff like that. Uh, apparently, they tested it based off of the audio. Off the yeah. audio? Yeah, Fizzy talks about it in the post. Yeah, yeah. Huh. If you if you want to read the thing, it's a pretty pretty in. -depth. Oh, I mean, I'll definitely read it. I just can't right now, so I'm trying to get a base understanding. <laughs> That's interesting, though. That's cool that people are. Yes. I, I okay. Well, regardless of that. Uh. So do you think that outweighs the the benefits of being able to play on a HD TV? Mm, I think I don't think the male community would want to. Well, I mean, Here's... regardless of what the community wants, like that, like well, just logically, uh, yeah, the I benefits. Think eventually we're gonna have to. It's gonna be needed, yeah, because we're gonna yeah. not have enough like CRTs and uh, controllers are not gonna exist and shit like that. And and like do. So is it better to like start getting used to that now? Like, is Evo yeah. a good first step towards that, you know? Or is it better to just go... I would have it in the back of my head, but not like be actively pursuing it. Because if the movement's going to happen, it's going to be obvious. And you can like kind of start doing it then. But I mean, it would have an immediate, effect, an immediate effect whenever it's... Like, we could do it now and it'd have an immediate effect on tournaments if everyone just started bringing monitors. You know, like, things are much easier to transport. You'd have more setups because TVs are easier to transfer. But then you also have the case of right when you make the switch, not... A lot of people see TVs, but not a lot of people have these monitors, you know? So there'd be a lack of setups, which is why switching is, like, really hard, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Fly, what were you going to say? Oh, we like cut see. you what, off. I what think. was I going to say? Okay, uh. <laughs> so I guess <laughs> at least while CRTs are around, I still would generally rather use them mm -hmm. because I don't really, at least to me as a competitor, I don't really see any advantages to LCDs. You did mention them being more feasible to transport and stuff, but mm -hmm. at least for the purposes of actually competing. I don't see why I would want to play on certainly, an LCD or certainly. something of the nature over a CRT. Yeah, I agree. Well, there is reasons because, like, considering uh, considering all tournaments with TRTs, like the like, say uh, any given tournament TV in which you would play a final set on, that CRT is going to be a different model than another t tournament, right? If the community had a standard like Evo does, like the Evo monitor, you would not have that variable because the LCD monitor you'd be using would be the same that, for every tournament. That is true. Certain CRTs do have uh, lag times similar to the monitor that they're testing. Yeah. But it's not all CRTs are lagless. So that and is it's like the point. same size and like dimensions and everything, so there'd be fewer variables considering as a competitor. I never even considered that. Okay. Um, but it, it also makes it easier for the tournament organizer for space. Not that big of a deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I also like just prefer playing on CRTs because I've always done that, and that's what I'm used to. But I'm just, like trying to think, like expand. You know, like could this work? How accessible is it? Is it that big of a deal? Does it need to happen? How much will it help? There's so many questions like that that are so important that I think the community like, just really has to answer. The past year or so, the question has been, is Melee going to live long enough to <laughs> we'll see the actual end of CRTs? Yeah. And I think yes, now, yeah. Melee and like PM will actually live. For sure. So, 
looking into those alternatives is actually like a, a reasonable yeah. and valuable endeavor. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's definitely very obvious now that Melee or Smash in general is just not going anywhere. It's uh, Another thing is like we could use the same monitors for a Smash 4 tournament as we would for Melee slash PM. It would be pretty nice. Yeah. Yes. Because the Smash 4 scene will be booming, like, ideally, and most likely. Mm -hmm. So, like, TOs will have more revenue to put into, like, having setups and stuff, and those would go into LCDs slash, you know, HDTVs that would uh, have the neck, the Wii U on it. Yeah. Those are definitely good points. So it seems like there are actually legitimate pros and cons to the m switching to monitors. And it seems to me the uh, the actual play is like, would be important for a lot of people. but It wouldn't be as hard to adjust to as actually getting everyone to buy the same monitor. Like uh, the biggest issue I think that would just like take a long memory. time, and it would be there'd be a lot of like mixing with monitors and CT, CRTs at tournaments for probably over a year if everyone tried converting, maybe even longer because everyone has CRTs and no one has these monitors. So, like the biggest issue for me would be like the sheer capital required to get this going. Yeah. Because like a lot of TLs have like maybe 30 CRTs and everything's fine. They don't have to put any extra money into it. Right. Uh, but if they were moving in over to LCDs, they need to get like the LGP or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's like th 300 bucks for setup. Like that's huge. Yeah. It's definitely huge. Like that, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. It's a problem because we already have all this stuff. And so like that makes it a huge like pain in the ass Legacy to switch over. And is is like, it's probably not worth it at this moment to switch over, but what about a tournament like EVO, which can supply all that stuff, and it's easier for them? I yeah, guess like, that is a more reasonable question. Is it worth worth it for us to make it easier on them? Are we willing to put up with the uh, standardization in their setups? Well, I mean, EVO did CRTs last year, and MLG is doing CRTs this year. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I guess it's a question of how long they're going to put up with CRTs. Yeah. I mean... Melee, MLG definitely tried monitors with uh, Brawl, and it didn't work at all. <laughs> I mean, it worked, but everyone complained Rip about monitors. it. What? RIP Ice Climbers. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, uh, I was sad. MLG Dallas lost to Chill again, three. I blame lag. <laughs> Who'd you lose to? Chilla and Tear Bear. Oh, okay. no. No, it wasn't the lag. Cario They're both. Guy. Yeah, Chilla's amazing. Chilla's awesome. But, uh, anyways, we talked about that for a bit. Any, uh, closing thoughts? Seth on? On Smash 4? Oh. Or, or the on the monitors one? or on oh. play? I think the monitors, yeah, like, like we've kind of said is something we're going to have to deal with eventually. Mm -hmm. um, well, something I'm curious about is that as technology improves over time, are we going to be able to see less delay for the games that we actually want to play on these things? Oh, this I... This is not something I know anything about. I can pretty much guarantee you that is, yes, we will. We'll see less and less okay. delay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can almost, like, 100% guarantee that. Yeah. Yes, if that is the case, it might actually be good to just stick with CRTs. Yeah. I, I don't know. It depends on how how, this how long, happen. right? I, I don't yeah, know how like long it would take. Yeah, like if it's not in the too distant future, maybe just stick with CRTs until we have stuff that's essentially comparable to them, mm -hmm. or at least the good CRTs, since it was already mentioned that some of them do have worse lag than, mm -hmm. or notably worse lag than others. But yeah, so that that's just a matter of the technology, and that's not something that I know enough about. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a very good point that I also didn't think about. Uh, technology does improve, and tech not like that kind of thing is great because there's so much competition for those products that they're constantly uh, trying to improve it. So that is definitely something that, that could come around in the next few years. Uh, and like every new model they're going to release, specifically with uh, faster response time. I mean, monitors at one millisecond response time. And they're going to keep trying to improve it in any way they can. So, 
every new model that comes out for these monitors is just going to be better. It's 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 not going to stale until like it's perfect, pretty much. Yo, uh, what if we got reflex on here? No. <laughs> I think I am actually gonna call it a early morning. <laughs> <laughs> no longer really a night. Yeah. I was thinking of doing that too, so maybe you can have Reflex just replace Cephalon and I. Yeah. Actually I might just call it quits then. If everyone's <laughs> if half the people are leaving. Uh well I mean it is minus one. For like all of us by now. I have been so. streaming for six hours, ten minutes and forty seconds. So <laughs> and it is light outside. Right now, yeah. it is 7:42 a.m. and I slept four hours last night and worked 18 hours. And I, what the fuck? Why am I awake? Why am I not tired? Is a better question. Uh, yeah, I just want to eat dinner and go to sleep soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I uh, I decided to stay up, so I'm gonna like eat. Shower, go to class. It's gonna be really fun. <laughs> oh, well, that Good is luck. fun, fun. Uh, but yeah, thanks for uh, talking with me, guys. Absolutely, it's fun. It's been fun. We should do it again. Sometime. Yeah, I definitely. Know. I'll try to set up something fun. more formal. In the middle of the night. Yeah, <laughs> I will definitely try to set up something more formal with like topics and stuff. Maybe this can like be a thing if people enjoy it. I'd be down for that. Sounds good. All right. Well, uh, thank you, stream. We are gonna all head out and get some sleep, except Strong Bad. Rest in peace, Strong no. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really get knocked out? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that would have been too perfect. Yo, uh, if you guys enjoyed the stream, uh, please follow me, twitch.tv slash highlane88. My Twitter is right there. Facebook. Uh, and YouTube, and give these other guys a follow as well. They can post their stuff in the chat. Uh, if they have stuff, content, make a Twitter. Uh, I think I actually did get it up and running. Dang. <laughs> that, should, that should be it. Oh shit, it's Cephalon. <laughs> What's the three? Yo. Totally yeah, following I you. mean, Leffen did it. <laughs> oh, so that no, is no, actually you on Twitter. <laughs> I thought it was yeah, just an imposter or something. Congratulations, Kathy Leffen. Dang, follow. We got all those followers already. <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you guys. Uh, we will try to do something like this again in the future, probably more organized, maybe with some topics, uh, some more Q&A. We'll probably keep it a lot shorter. <laughs> Then, uh, yeah, six hours is good. Six hours is a little, it's a bit of a stretch. Well, this is pretty. Uh, I'm gonna have to upload this into YouTube as four parts <laughs> because YouTube only lets me upload well, two hours at a time. Maybe, like, <laughs> uh, just uh, look for the good parts instead of the music and bashing and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll try to ship through all of it. But, uh, yeah. Uh, have a good night, guys. And that's it. I feel like I was gonna say something else, but I forgot. Anything? Uh, any? Uh, anything else anyone else wants to say? I guess. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. You guys. I think. I think we're spent. Everyone's good. Uh, I think I'm good. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. See ya. <laughs>